Hello, this is Zikat for you in AutoCAD 2015 for beginners. In this third tutorial, we will discuss how to protect your drawing, how to use most of the drawing aids, for example. We'll cover snap mode and grid, polar snap, dynamic input, ortho mode, polar tracking, isometric drafting, object snap, and object snap tracking in that very same order. In our last video, we drew our, our project up to here, and the pending question was what happens if CAD crashes at this point, or when we invested a lot of time and effort? Well, we'll lose some of that, so now we'll make a couple of features to avoid such a risk. We go to Application menu, and at the bottom, we have the Options button. Let's click it. This will give us the Options windows that is really important, now we go to open and save tab and on the left we have sections file safety precautions we want always checked the option automatic save so uh, CAD protects our work without us doing anything now right below we can specify the intervals in between the automatic savings here I have 10 minutes which is the default but we can change it to whatever number we want let's say Eight minutes and finally you also want to have the option create backup copy with each save checked to retrieve it in case it crashes now of course we click apply and OK now in the event of a crash next time you open CAD it'll give you the option to recover the drawing in the drawing recovery manager which will open up automatically we can get there by going to application menu drawing utilities and on the right we have to scroll down a bit to click on uh, drawing recovery manager and this is what we'll have after a crash to give us the option to recover the drawing so in these files you will have everything you drew up to the last automatic save and with this I'm saying that yes you will lose what you did after that point until the time of the failure maybe a minute or two who knows this is why it's good practice to manually save after any important operation or as often as you can after all it's just a matter of <laughs> clicking ctrl s now let's get acquainted with some of the drawing aids and their functions as we keep drawing most of them are located down here on the status bar from left to right the first one is the drawing grid which shares a tab down here with snap mode and grid is basically the equivalent of a graph paper on a drawing board we can toggle it on and off by pressing F7 or by clicking the icon it is used simply for reference when drawing and its settings can be modified by using command these settings you can type it on the keyboard or just pulling the menu next to snap and clicking on snap settings when the dial box opens under the tab snap and grid the right column has the options to adapt the grid to our preferences for example we can change from a rectangular grid to a dotted one by checking the first option under the section grid style Another feature worth mentioning is the section grid spacing which is used to set the grid to the specified value. In our case we can change the default half of an inch to 5 feet but see that once we change the X spacing the Y spacing value also changed to 5 feet. Now is it possible to have uh, let's say a rectangular grid? Yes sir! We can do it by unchecking on the snap column option equal X and Y spacing and then modifying the values that we prefer. In my case, I could use 10 feet for the X spacing. Click now OK to see the result and this is what we have. Now, as you already saw, most of the time grid is used combined with snap. So snap mode is used to force the crosshair to move at predefined distances in both X and Y directions. It also can be turned on and off by clicking on the icon next to grid on the status bar or using the function key 
F9. To see it in action, let's modify its settings, and you should know how to get there, right? So in the snap spacing section, let's change the default half of an inch to 10 feet. And if we have the equal X and Y spacing option checked, it'll use it for both axes. Now click OK, and the result is easily seen when turning on the snap feature. When it's active, the mouse moves at 10 feet in both X and Y directions. When it's turned off, then it moves freely in the model space. If you're drawing in isometric view, then the option to snap that way is there as well by having checked this box here. And we also have polar snap option, which basically is used when creating or modifying objects and restricts the crosshair movement to the specified increments along a polar angle. I know this is kind of a little bit confusing now, but we'll cover it when talking about polar tracking in a few seconds. Our next drawing aid is called Dynamic Input, which basically provides a command interface near the crosshair in the drawing area. It is not intended to replace the command prompt down here, but will display cat prompts when you activate a command. We can toggle it on and off by using F12, and by having it active, you can concentrate in the drawing area instead of having to look down to the command prompt. Let's right click on top of the dynamic input button and select its settings. As you see now, it has three basic settings for the pointer, second the dimensions, and finally the prompts for the commands. By having these options checked or unchecked, you can modify what it will display. Personally, it doesn't bother me to have them all selected. The next drawing aid we saw it in action in tutorial number two, the last tutorial, is called Ortho Mode and basically restricts the movement to 90 degree angles in both X and Y axis. We turn it on and off by using either F8 or the icon. The following one is called Polar Tracking and we use F10 to toggle it or by clicking the icon as well. What it does is providing us with a rubber line or what we call an alignment path so we can select our next point when drawing or modifying objects. It basically uses a set of angles to provide those temporary alignment path or suggestions. Pull its drop down menu from the status bar and all this set of predefined angles can be used with just one click. Let's use the second one from top to bottom which includes angles 45, 90, 135, etc. As you see, it has increments of 45 degrees. Let's use command P line so, or polyline so we see it working. Use this corner here as the first corner for the polyline and see that as we move around our mouse approaching any 45 degree angle, it provides this green rubber line or alignment path. Now with the path visible and pointing up, we will enter 24 inches or 2 feet and hit enter. Now with the command still active, we go to the status bar and from the angle alignment menu, just change the one starting with 30 degrees and you see how the suggested path varies to give us options in increments of 30 degrees as we move our crosshair. Of course, we can use angles other than the specified ones by pulling the drop down menu and going to the tracking settings. We can manually here modify the base angle or have multiple ones in use by checking the additional angles option and then clicking new. So if you add here, let's say uh, 12 degrees, when you have a command active like line, you will receive a suggestions path at increments of 30 degrees and specifically one at an angle of 12 degrees. Now let's go back for a second to the settings uh, and move to snap and grid tab to talk about what was pending. Remember the polar snap option here. When this option is used, we have to specify up here the distance we want it to snap to. 
In this case, we will use five feet to see it visible and make sure to activate snap. After clicking OK and upon activating command line or polyline again, first we'll acquire the alignment path and now as we move through it, we see how our suggested points are clearly identified on the path itself at a specified five feet distance when we approach it. And all we do if we want it is just to click for the second time. Okay guys, at this point, we would like to hear from you. Feel free to leave a comment or a question. We'll do our best to answer as soon as we can. And please make sure to click to like the video. Now, let's keep going. The next drawing aid is the isometric drafting, which we don't have a function to activate. We only do it by clicking it on the status bar. As the name indicates, it's only used when we draw an isometric view. We just click the icon to toggle between the regular layout and the isometric ones. Look at the change in the crosshair shape that indicates it as we do it. If we put the drop down menu, it basically allows you to use one of three different isoplanes or isometric planes. So you can start your isometric drawing from one side. change to the top plane to complete the top portion and finally draw your last side so all angles and settings are automatically adjusted by CAD when using this feature so we don't have to do any math other than entering the length of your objects and or the drawing angles if applicable as if you were drawing normally and we can cycle through these isoplanes with the function key F5. Now our next drawing aid is object snap which is activated with F3 and this is a really necessary tool in CAD especially because it enhances the precision of your drawing. As the name indicates we can snap or attach what we're doing to existing objects. To see what it does with a command active like polyline, just go ahead and approach existing objects in the drawing. We will see these different shapes like triangles, squares, and others appear and disappear as we hover over the objects. These are basically suggestions from CAD to indicate we can snap to those points when they are visible and we have a command active. To do that, just click when you see them and it will attached to it. Among the multiple options we'll have midpoints, endpoints, intersections, you name it. Each shape has a particular meaning as we can see when pulling the drop down menu. Another option is just using the drafting settings dial box to go there use command this settings again or just click on the object snap settings by selecting it when pulling the menu. We can specify which ones we prefer to have on screen by checking them individually. Other option is to use the select all button on the top right, but normally I don't use them all due to the lack of precision of some of them. So I'll deselect apparent intersections, nearest and extensions. Remember this is up to you, so if you prefer having them all select, just try it and let me know whether you like it or not. Now the drawing aid on the left of object snap is called object snap tracking and it happens to activate with F11. It works in conjunction with object snap. So we'll call let's say line command and click on one of our objects. What this does is that it provides temporary alignment path so we can locate points on them but the path will be generated based on object snap points like midpoints or endpoints. So let's approach this midpoint here and then just move towards the line we will do. As you see it generates this green alignment path. Also acquire points will display a small plus sign and from them it creates the temporary path. Our suggested point will be indicated by the X shape, so we can click to select it. 
By default, the alignment path will run across the model space and are said to be orthogonal, meaning they will be at 90 degree angles. But we can change those settings on the polar tracking tab on the right column to use all polar angles or to generate the angles relative to the last segments instead of the default. Now, all the way to the right, we have the customization button. Click it and we see now that we have other options to hide or display this and other drawing aids. We won't cover the rest now, but instead when we get to use them later on. With this in mind, our next challenge will be creating the base for the cabinets area on our kitchen, but this will be reserved for the next tutorial. So I guess this is all for now. Hope you guys like the video and if so, please leave a comment. At least to say thank you or whether you like the pace, if it's too fast or too slow, whatever uh, you prefer, please just let me know. You're also more than welcome to ask any questions you might have and remember, if you enjoyed, give a like. You can also subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for watching and see you next time.